Right, today's video is slightly different. Uh, we're responding to a tweet that one of my pupils sent in and it said, uh, could we look at conduction, convection and radiation? That's quite a big topic. Uh, so I wanted to know what particularly what they were concerned about. And it turned out it was the annoying cavity wall insulation questions of which there was one in January 14, I think, uh, and also clothes and foil, and by which I assume they didn't mean sort of tin foil clothes, but maybe they did. What we're going to do is just uh, talk about a few questions and what the answer scheme is generally looking for. So the question uh, about cavity insulation was from January 2014, paper one, uh, and it talked about insulation being used to reduce uh, the amount of heat loss from or energy loss from houses and this is achieved with trapped air and they mentioned trapped air in the question that's really important in the mark scheme because if you talk about trapped air uh, without sort of giving it context you're not going to get the mark because they told you about the trapped air in the question so the question says explain how this type of insulation reduces energy loss by conduction um, and the, the big things to talk about there is the idea that the uh, air is a poor uh, conductor or a good insulator there's fibres in there, and the fibres are also really poor conductors and, and good insulators. You could then talk about why air is such a good insulator. The particles are far apart, um, that sort of thing. And also that conduction happens best in solids, so that's why trapped air is good, because trapped air is not a solid. So uh, you could also talk about the fibres maybe not being metal, because um, metal is a good conductor. The second part says explain how this type of insulation reduces uh, heat loss by convection so again it's good to talk about how convection works talking about hot air expanding becoming less dense and moving the key thing is this movement if the air is trapped the air can't move so stopping the movement of air stops convection um, and if we look in the mark scheme it says yeah preventing convection currents uh, stopping air from moving no air moving no convection air is trapped fibers prevent movement that sort of thing so we're gonna look at a couple more um, these sorts of questions can be quite long, and long questions are um, troubling because you don't really know where to start and, and how much information to include. As with all long questions, so this one we're going to look at as a four marker from, uh, when is it, summer 2012, question seven. Uh, I would always suggest uh, bullet points are really important and also keeping things simple and making sure you cover all the bases. So, you're asked how a woolen, uh, woolen blanket, thick woolen blanket, maybe that's important, uh, how that keeps someone warm. So loads of things you can talk about, um, but if you break it down into conduction, convection, and radiation, and evaporation as well, which is the fourth type, which we sometimes talk about, uh, you should cover all the marks. So conduction, well, if you've got uh, a sort of woolen blanket, you're gonna trap a layer of air underneath, and the trapped air is a really good insulator, like we talked about in the previous question. Um, and it's a really good insulator because the particles are far apart. So that's one or two marks there. The fibre that the, the blanket's made from itself is also a poor conductor. So you could talk about uh, fibres are poor conductor because they're uh, made of an insulating material. Uh, this will also reduce the heat loss by conduction. Then you could talk about convection separately. So there's trapped air, so the air can't move, so it's not going to convect. Also, um, the woolen blankets are solid, so that's not going to allow convection either. Radiation, well, it's not really ap uh, applicable in this, so we're not going to talk about it. Um, mentioning convection currents in there being re reduced or stopped is a good one, thinking back to convection. And sweating, so the sweat can't evaporate, and if the sweat can't evaporate, then you reduce the heat loss by evaporation. So there's sort of five, six, seven points there, uh, and I'll try and put the picture up on the screen, but, you know, trying to keep it as structured as possible, trying to talk about as many as you can. It then follows up saying, uh, what if they used a foil blanket instead, would that help keep them warm? And, and yes, the foil blanket would help trap uh, more radiant heat, it will reflect the thermal radiation back in, so that helped keep them, keep them warm. But the flip side to that is that the foil blanket is also uh, made of metal, so that metal could conduct the heat away. So you're probably gonna gain more from the uh, thermal radiation being reflected in than you lose because of the uh, conduction away. So. All right, another question is the potato question, which is another much hated question. Uh, describe how energy is transferred on a hot plate to heat up the potato. So here we've got a saucepan, um, a hot plate, some water. So you can talk about the different heat transfer mechanisms in the different bits of the heating. So uh, there's a big list of where conduction is. So it's conduction from the hot plate to the pan, from uh, conduction through the pan, 
from the pan to the water, then convection in the water, and then conduction from the water to the potato. Conduction through the potato. So there's four marks there, uh, and it wasn't really clear in the question what they wanted. Um, so it just says, describe how the energy is transferred, but uh, they just wanted to know that it was conduction in, uh, in most of the cases and convection in, in the water. Uh, I think I probably would have talked about the, you know, how conduction was working there, so the particles uh, colliding with each other, transferring energy, uh, but it turns out that's not really what they were asking for in the question. The second bit of this is even more disliked, it's the microwave potato question. Um, again, it's talking about the, here you're talking about the microwaves, um, what they are, so the EM waves penetrating into the food, causing the water to not vibrate more and then conduction to the rest of the potato. It's not a great question to be honest. And the last question we're going to look at is uh, from the same year. So just showing that in paper two, you can have stuff that was in paper one as well. Um, the question asks about evaporation, how that can lead to cooling. So the idea that the most energetic particles leaving as the, as the sweat evaporates and reducing the average uh, energy of the particles that are left, so therefore reducing the temperature. So the second part of the question asks how a shiny foil blanket could help prevent heat loss. Uh, the point here is that the runner has stopped running, so they're not producing as much heat in the first place, so they're going to be cooling down, uh, and they're going to be covered in sweat, so the amount of sweat that they've got on them um, would evaporate away, and if you've got a blanket on the top, you're going to prevent that evaporation happening. Um, you're also going to stop the wind getting to the sweat, which would speed up the evaporation. Uh, the very last bit of the question talks about how the foil sheet prevents heat loss. The biggest thing the foil sheet can do to prevent heat loss is to reflect thermal radiation back in. Um, so the, the runner's obviously really hot from running, they're radiating lots of, of infrared, hits the foil sheet, reflects back in. So it's, um, it's reducing heat loss by radiation because it's a shiny surface which makes it a really poor absorber and a very good reflector. So whenever you're talking about all of these questions, uh, you're trying to think what particular heat mechanism is it stopping? Is it stopping conduction because it's a gas or a plastic or wood or something like that? So it's a poor conductor. Is it stopping convection? And generally when we're talking about stopping convection, we're talking about trapping air, <clears throat> preventing convection currents. Is it stopping radiation? Is it shiny? Is it going to reflect the infrared back in? Uh, and also we can talk about, is it stopping evaporation? Is it, you know, keeping the, the moisture trapped in, the, the sweat trapped in? Is it preventing wind and stuff getting to the, to the sweat to prevent evaporation? So the key to all these questions is uh, bullet points, because they're generally long questions. Talk about the mechanism that's being stopped, if it's an insulation question, and how it's being stopped. And that should hopefully help. So I hope that helps, Alex.